Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 19th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Error messages, leaking information is probably a concept that's very popular to people who have done any kind of network reconnaissance or intrusion detection. For example, if you do get a port unreachable error message back, you still know that the host that sent the message exists. But similar concepts also apply to operating systems and file systems. And Jan looks at the particular interesting feature in Windows. In Windows, if you don't have read access to a folder, you're not supposed to be able to see which files exist in this particular folder. But turns out you get different error messages depending on whether the file exists or doesn't exist. If the file doesn't exist, the operating system will tell you the file doesn't exist. If the file exists, then you get a permission denied error. So Jan actually wrote a little C sharp script in order to take advantage of this and brute force folder names. A reader pointed out that Jan wasn't actually the first one to come across this. Actually, no real surprise. Like it is a fairly common problem where error messages leak information. John Page also did a write up on this issue back in September of last year. The issue has been reported to Microsoft, but it didn't sort of meet the threshold where Microsoft is going to come up with a patch for the problem. And the Amazon security camera subsidiary Ring has, of course, been in the news in bad ways in a recent month, typically with attackers just brute forcing users' passwords. Appears that this has caused now sufficient pain to a ring where a ring is actually significantly increasing the security of accounts. First of all, users will now have to use two step verification in order to sign in to a ring. Whenever you log in to a ring, you will receive a one time passcode either via SMS or email. And this new behavior appears to be mandatory. So this is not something that you have to opt in. Now, yes, a lot has been written in the past about the use of SMS and email in order to sort of set up a pseudo two-factor authentication. I think here in this case, it's actually a significant step up from what Ring used to do, which wasn't really much. In addition, there will be an alert whenever someone successfully logs in from a new device. This was another issue with the old system that you never really knew how many people logged in using your account or where they came from. Now, Ring also ups its privacy protections. There was an awful lot of tracking, advertising, so going on in the Ring website. And for now, much of that will be disabled and there will be sort of a more personalized opt-in, opt-out scheme that they'll devise later on. Now, Google, of course, with its Nest product line had similar issues, not quite as popularized as the ring issues that came up in the last few months. But still, the basic problem here is the same, that these cloud backends that are being used to control devices often don't really have sufficient security controls a week or so ago, Google actually also started enforcing mandatory two-factor authentication for its Google Nest devices. Well, and if you still somehow managed to run a perimeter security device like a VPN concentrator with a year old vulnerability, maybe it will give you additional motivation to finally fix this since now apparently state sponsored attackers from Iran are apparently attacking these vulnerabilities. Clear Sky, a security company is reporting that they spotted Iranian hackers as they attributed them going after these vulnerabilities. Now, we're talking here about Pulse Secure Connect and things like the Palo Alto and even the Citrix vulnerability. I think they're kind of late to the game here. They'll be lucky if they still find vulnerable systems that have not already been more or less compromised and probably sort of disabled uh, by now by various other attackers. 
Well, that's it for today. And by the way, WordPress uh, plugin vulnerabilities, of course, but they aren't really worth my time anymore. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.